Cato Institute senior fellow Randall O'Toole says if Wisconsin was serious about improving its transportation system, it wouldn't be talking about trains. The bottom line is that anything you can do with trains in Wisconsin, you can do faster, better, cheaper, and safer with buses. Uh, buses can go as fast as commuter rail. Buses can go as fast as the so-called high-speed rail they want to build from Milwaukee to Madison. Uh, and buses are safer. Uh, they're far cheaper. They cost like 2% as much to provide the same level of service, uh, to, to initiate the same level of service. And then the operating costs are lower as well. So if you don't have to pay those upfront capital costs, if you don't have to go heavily in debt, you're just a lot better off as a community to run buses. And, and though there are a few people who say, well, I won't ride a bus, well, is it really important that we provide gigantic subsidies to snobs? There's an old saying in business circles about why the railroad industry fell apart 100 years ago. Railroads failed because they thought they were in the railroad business, when in reality, they were in the transportation business. O'Toole says supporters of commuter rail still do not grasp that lesson. Well, there's this big romanticization about trains. And I think people think that 100 years ago, everybody got around on passenger trains or they got around on streetcars. And they don't realize that only the wealthy were able to ride the passenger trains, intercity trains, and that only the middle class, white collar workers and their families were able to ride the streetcars. Blue collar workers couldn't. They had to walk everywhere. They couldn't afford the streetcars. And uh, the idea that we should go back to that era of a two class society where some people had mobility and other people didn't is just un-American. I mean, here we are in the most mobile society in the world, and these people are out to kill it. It doesn't make any sense at all. The state is considering legislation that would establish regional transit authorities that would lay the groundwork for commuter rail throughout Wisconsin. Lawmakers who oppose those bills agree this is not about transportation. The issue for these RTAs isn't about coordination. It's not about transportation. It's about money. The only reason they want to form these RTAs is so that there's a new way to pick your pocket to create subsidies for a version of transportation that at best is a social welfare program. It's not really a transportation program. So when I look at empty buses driving around the capital, I say to myself, okay, there are some people who will utilize that, but everybody knows that when you get a job, what's the first thing you save up for? A car! because it's your way for financial independence. So to somehow say we're willing to spend billions of dollars on subsidized transit and on new trains, when the reality is we don't have enough money for transportation as it is, kind of seems once again just like we're doing with these Talgo jobs, where we say to ourselves, let's work on the shiny new project because the old one's a little boring. Well, let's focus on what really works, that 98% of the people in Wisconsin are going to use, which is good highways and for some people, buses. The idea of having shiny new trains might seem sexy to some, but it seems to me to be a boondoggle in the making that we're never going to get rid of once it started. The state is going to have to subsidize it for years, and then when it's worn out, the few people who ride it will form a lobby to make sure that it keeps on getting subsidized, and the state throws a few hundred million more dollars at it to rebuild it entirely so that they can keep subsidizing it for another 30 years after that. We've seen that in Washington, D.C., we've seen it in in other cities that built rail transit 30 years ago or more, San Francisco, once you're done, you're not done paying for it. You have to pay for it forever. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.